Hey guys, today I want to present a solution of Emo Shortlist 2021 problem A5. Firstly, let's have a look at the problem statement. Let n greater than or equal to 2 be an integer and let a1 up to a n be positive real numbers, such that their sum is equal to 1. We want to prove the following inequality. The sum of k equals to 1 up to n of a k divided by 1 minus a k times a1 plus dot 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 plus a k minus 1 all squared is less than one third. To show that this inequality is true, we're going to take a probabilistic approach. This is motivated by the fact that the sum of these numbers is 1 and that they are positive. That means that we can interpret them as the probabilities of rolling some number on a dice. So we construct an n-sided dice such that the probability of rolling um, the number i is equal to a i. And that works, as I've already said, because there's positive reals and because their sum is equal to 1. Now we want to do some probabilistic experiment to show that this inequality is true. Therefore, we need to double count something which we can interpret as something like this and also evaluate it at the value of one third. To do this, let's have a look at this term. A k is the probability of rolling the number k. Furthermore, this sum right here is the probability of rolling a number which is just lower than k and squaring it is, can be interpreted as doing this twice. Therefore, if we just ignore this term in the denominator and sum all of these numbers up, this entire quantity is the probability of rolling this dice three times and getting numbers z1, z2, and z3. And then this quantity, if we ignore the denominator, is exactly the probability that z1 would be the largest of these three numbers, which is in turn less than one third. That can easily be proven because this probability must be equal for 1, 2 and 3 due to symmetry reasons. But also their sum is not quite 1 because there are two other cases. In particular, two of these numbers could be equal and higher than the third. And then there would not be a largest value. And furthermore, all three values could be equal as well. But this does not prove our given inequality because what we've done right now is to ignore this denominator, which does not work, because it is always between zero and one, and therefore dividing by it increases the magnitude of the left side. But since we want to bound it from above, this does not work. So we have to make an improvement to our probabilistic experiment. And we can see the potential in what I've already said, because what we've done right now is we have ignored these two boundary cases where there are two equal and largest numbers. Let's have a look at these cases. So I just want to restate it if we get something like 6, 2, 3, m, which is just the number which is the output of the experiment, would be 1, because z1 is larger than z2 and z3 in this notation. But for instance, if we got something like 5, 5, and 4, then there is no single largest number between these three. And therefore what we do is we choose one of one or, and two randomly. So the outcome is with equal probability of 50%, one or two. This is just how we define our experiment to get a better boundary. And if all of the numbers are equal, then we also choose one of them randomly. This problem is now entirely symmetric between 1, 2, and 3, and one of the outcome is always one of these numbers as well. Therefore, the probability of getting the number m equals 1 is exactly one third. So now we have established that p of m equals 1 is exactly one third. This is already the right hand side of our inequality, and we have to now somehow use what we've already done to really prove it. So what we'll now do is to evaluate the probability that m equals to 1 
in another way. The first case is that Z1 is actually the largest of the three numbers and we've already exactly said what the probability of that happening is, which is exactly this sum without the denominator. So, which means that the first number is just some k, but then the Z2 and Z3 must be lower and the probability for that happening is exactly this term squared. Now adding the other two cases. The second case is that Z1 equals Z2, but they are both larger than Z3. Therefore, we get the sum going from k equals to 1 up to n of 1 half, because we will choose randomly between 1 and 2 in this case, of times a k squared times this sum, but not squared. Because only Z3 is less than Z1 and Z2, but we must multiply this entire sum by 2 because there's also the case left where Z1 equals Z3 and they are both larger than Z2. So we add the last term for the third case, which is that all three numbers be equal. It is important to multiply with one third because then we'll choose randomly between 1, 2 and 3 and we get a k cubed because that's a probability if we sum it all up of having equal values everywhere. What we actually do in the next step seems quite bold, but the inequality turns out not to be that sharp. We can actually ignore this entire sum and must therefore write a greater than sign to um, make up for it. And then we will still get some sort of term which is still not less than this. If we manage to show that, then we are practically done because this is exactly one third. What we get is if we factor out this sum, which is a good move because then we are left with this part. If we factor out this sum, we get, or rather, this term inside of each summand. We get this sum exactly. multiplied with 1 for this case plus a k divided by this sum. So what we need to do now is to prove that this is still not less than this and we'll be done. So we have already established that the probability of n equaling 1 is exactly one third. We also know this inequality holds. We now need to bound this from below by that term to finish our proof. We see that the difference between, or rather the quotient between each of these sums to these ones is only the 1 divided by 1 minus ak and that term. We can compare those easily because 1 divided by 1 minus ak is equal to 1 plus ak divided by 1 minus ak. And 1 minus ak is just the sum of all of these numbers without ak. So therefore this is equal to 1 plus ak over a1 plus ak minus 1 plus ak plus 1 and so on up, up to a. But this must be less then, or rather less than or equal, because this could be zero, this is less than or equal to 1 plus ak over a1 plus ak minus 1, because we have decreased our um, denominator, which increases the value of this sum, and therefore this is larger than or equal to this sum because of this inequality. So combining this inequality with what we have now established gives us the following result, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And since p of n equals to 1 is one third, we are done.